Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Downloading and Installing Eclipse. This video was made under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial License. In this video, you're going to learn what Eclipse is and what it can be used for. You'll see how to download and install Eclipse, and we'll take a brief look at Eclipse to see that it is working on your computer. So you may be asking, what is Eclipse? Eclipse is a development environment, a software application with lots of tools that you can use to create stuff. Eclipse is integrated. This means that all the tools provided by Eclipse are collected in one software package that works together. You can also think of integrated as meaning diverse components that you create are integrated to form a complete project so finally, Eclipse is known as an Integrated Development Environment, or IDE. To get Eclipse, you'll want to visit Eclipse.org. This is the main site for the Eclipse Foundation. Let's jump right in. Click on the Download Eclipse button at the top right of your screen. Here you should see a list of various versions of Eclipse. The one that we are going to be using for our class, where we develop web applications, is the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers. Some of you may have a version with less features, which is known as the Eclipse Standard. If you use this in a previous class to develop Java applications, you'll need to add to that version, or simply get rid of it and download the Java EE version in order to get the web features. You'll notice over to the side of the Eclipse IDE for Java EE developers a couple of options about the type of system that you might have. You might also notice that you will need to get the Java runtime environment. I'm going to first jump out to get that. So if you do not have Java, or the first time you're installing Eclipse, you'll want to get the Java runtime environment. I'm going to the Oracle JDK, download the latest development kit from Java, the one for Mac OS, notice mine is an X64. This is important because you want your Eclipse version to match your Java development kit version. I'll accept the license and I'll download the DMG file because I have a Mac. If you're using a Windows machine, be sure to get either Windows X86 or get Windows X64. Be sure you get the appropriate Eclipse version to match which of those you've chosen. On a Mac, in order to install the JDK, I simply want to click on the DMG file. On a Windows machine, you'll probably have an EXE or an MSI file which you can click on to install. Now that my JDK is installed, I can go back to installing Eclipse. During the installation of Eclipse, I should be able to choose which JDK I'm using. As I downloaded the Java 64-bit JDK, I'm going to pick the 64-bit Eclipse version. Here on the download page, I can simply double-click on the download icon to start my download for Eclipse. My download is complete and you can see that it has been stored in the downloads folder on my Mac. Let's notice a couple things about the file name. This is the Eclipse JEE version, which is what we need for web development. Kepler is the code name of the current version. My version is for the Mac OS X and I got the 64-bit version. I can double click on the file to decompress it and then you can notice that the Eclipse folder is now in my downloads. I like to move my folder to some place a little bit more permanent, so I'm going to move it to the application folder. I'll pull up another finder window, and then I'll just drag it into applications. If you look down into the Eclipse folder, you will notice an icon for Eclipse, and you should see that this is an application file. 
I like to make it a little bit more accessible so I'm going to drag this icon to my dock. That way I can click on the dock to load Eclipse. Windows users can do something similar by creating a shortcut and then placing that shortcut onto their desktop. I can double click on the Eclipse icon in the dock and it will start to load. Here we see the Eclipse splash screen. This is what you'll typically see when you start to load Eclipse. This window we can choose where we want our Eclipse projects to be saved by default. You'll notice that it's going to save it on my machine in a folder called Workspace which is under the path Users Craig Piercy Documents. I can choose to change this by clicking on the browse but I like to keep it here. So whenever I look for a project I can load it from the Workspace. So far so good. It looks like Eclipse is installed. When you first open it, you're going to see this welcome screen. Note that it has some important links that can help you find tutorials, samples, and other news about the Eclipse project. I generally close this window. Note that you can get back to it if you need to. And here we are at the main Eclipse screen, and it looks like I have installed Eclipse successfully. The primary reference for this video and the content found here is the Eclipse Foundation website at Eclipse.org. This is your go-to source for all things concerning Eclipse. If you want to know about Eclipse or need some help or to look at documentation, this is where you should start. This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. Background music is DC 3000 by Thievery Corporation from the Wired CD Rip Sample Mass Share 2004. This has been a Piercy production.